An interesting question that's often asked is why are soap bubbles round? The answer might surprise you. First of all, it's not a soap bubble. It's an air bubble. There's air in there. You blow air into it to make it. And that air is a gas, and gases try to fill up their container. They have what's called air pressure, and they're trying to push against the sides of this bubble. And they're being held in place by the bubble, but the bubble is made up of water. Now, if you were to ever make soap bubble material yourself, you'd use some soap, but you'd use a lot more water. And it's the water that provides the strength of the bubble. There's some other tricks, but we'll just work on water and soap. Now, the water has molecules that hold it together. And there's forces, kind of like magnets. You're familiar with magnets, of course. There's forces that attract magnets. There's also forces that repel magnets. I love that. But that force of attraction is kind of like what holds molecules together in water. Now, when molecules are held together in anything, uh, they form different shapes. In a solid, those shapes are called crystals. This is an important crystal called galena, and it's got flat, shiny surfaces to it because it forms a certain kind of shape. This is a different mineral called quartz, and the molecules have forces that hold them together in a different shape. This is my favorite. This is a, uh, a crystal formed when you're making molasses, and uh, this is sugar. Crystals of sugar, they're delicious. If I were to heat those crystals and heat any material, I could get the molecules that are holding it together, uh, they would lose some of their energy and they would uh, change shape. We call that melting. And so in water, if it's a solid, the molecules are holding together and it forms crystals, Snowflakes, you've heard of those? Those are crystals of water. And if we add some heat to it, we can melt it and it turns into drops. And so water forms drops. They're being held together. Now the forces that pull on it are called tension forces. Pulling forces is called tension. And so there's tension holding a drop together. But if I add soap to it, I change something. Now all of a sudden soap hangs out on the surface. And so if this is a drop of water, now this surface has got soap on it. And this surface has got soap on it. And so it forms a sheet where the water is connected side to side, but it doesn't have to worry about the surfaces because the soap is there. It's called a surfactant. And so now it wants to form a sheet. And that's the shape that it wants to be in. Now, if I force it with some compressed air to change its shape, I can get it to form a bubble. Trapped air, trapped in there. And, uh, and so that's the shape it turns into with the compressed air. Now that sheet can become very big. And that has to do with some of the other tricky stuff we had to soak. But uh, uh, it's really just a sheet of water. And the forces that are pulling it in, we can overcome them with other kinds of forces, gravity, a little air pressure in the air, and we can do that to make bubbles. So I can trap the air in a film of water, and when I do that, I end up with a shape that is the result of the balance of the forces of the air pushing out and the water trying to go back to a flat surface pulling back in. So the water tension and the pressure from the air produce an equilibrium where all the forces are balanced and everything is perfect. And the shape for that is going to be a circle. Well, except where other things are coming into play. There's now other forces up here that are pushing on it. So it's not a perfect circle anymore. As a matter of fact, I can't get this to work. We'll do this one. If I've got two bubbles, in this case three, the place where they're touching isn't a sphere anymore. It's flat because the pressure from this bubble and the pressure from this one are equalizing and producing a flat surface where they connect. But all the air in both of those bubbles wants to escape. And if you give it a chance, it will escape 
And if you give the air in there a chance, it'll escape. That little bubble there. And then we're left with a film again. So the reason soap bubbles are sphere, it's a balance between the air pushing out and the water pulling in. And that water is helped by the soap. So that's why it forms a sphere.